And guys, we're back with Lucid9. When we last left off, uh, we were stalling for time. We broke his phone. Right, right, right. We're, this might be the finale. I think. It probably will be. Could not be. But I, I have time to record today. I went to class yesterday. That sucked. You know how first day of class is. It's always the worst. But you know what's even worse? The second day of class. And then the third and, you know, just... <laughs> no. Anyway. You always were a sharp kid, weren't you? Hold on, I, I need to get back into the voice. Let me take a drink. I had high expectations for you, but you've exceeded every one of them. You deserve a gold star. I hope you know that a gold star isn't exactly a great incentive at the moment. Oh, but I heard that positive reinforcement is better than punishment, particularly when it comes to children. To be fair, it's always thought of it. I've always thought of it as a ruse. Punishment gets results. You just need to look at history to realize that. It's because of whips, whips and taskmasters of the ancient pyramids and the great terracotta army. Well, actually, weren't the pyramids actually, like, not slaves? I, I haven't researched that into it, but I remember Persona 4 mentioned that, and I looked it up, and it, I was like, oh, that's probably a thing. Meanwhile, what has modern humanity done? Skyscrapers? I mean, you know, like, the internet like that you can look at pictures of cats from anywhere in the world basically like that's pretty great what beauty do those hold the glorified prisons cages of metal and glass meant to trap in pathetic little animals is that what you consider success building something big some people just prefer happiness happiness what a subjective measure of reality at least impressive structures are tangible they're made of strong material carved to loom above the common populace when you look up, you realize the depth of man's in insignificance. Happiness? What can measure happiness? How many smiles they send per day? Let's not forget the first world dream, living in a mansion with a Ferrari and thousands of servants. Nothing brings happiness, but just so much brings awe. This is just a meaningless stall for time, but I'll take it. He's starting to warm up. Weirdly enough, so am I. Maybe happiness is subjective, but ah, uh, does it really bring fulfillment? Doesn't it? Have you ever stood up on the precipice of a great chasm and just thought, oh, I could just die happy at this moment? No, that's never happened to me, actually. It's an unparalleled feeling in the world, child. You seem to be regarding me with skepticism. Then pray tell, what is your opinion? What makes you happy in this foolish little world? What makes me happy? Something about the question seems to be a trap. Is it waiting for something to use against me? Is it time for another layer of psychological warfare? My friends, I could say. My friends make me happy. Then he would point out how none of them are here. How have endangered the only one who matters. How friends are simply an arbitrary term for a circle of useless acquaintances. All I would feel is despair. Then what else could I offer as an answer? Being alive. Being alive to do what? Feel and experience everything that life has to offer. Then Yodo would say that. If the gift of life is enough to bring happiness, then everyone should always be happy. The slave beneath a whip, the traffic girl in a brothel, the prisoner of war on Iraq. And again, I would only feel despair. What makes me happy? What fuels me to get up in the morning and keep going? Altruism? Hardly. I think most people in the world are pretty stupid and don't deserve to- Wow, that, that's pretty harsh, Yama. Deserve to live. Love? Yes, I've got some fountain of affection. What is there to fuel me? What makes me happy? Anything I think of, I know that you're taking warp and use against me. Or try to break me with my own words. Oh, have I been caught? A shame we had to meet under these circumstances, child. Your mental faculties are truly impressive. I need to take another drink. I can't get my voice to go high enough that I want it to, for Mr. Yoda's voice. Do you understand the theme of my lecture? That's better. I can't say that I do. Will there be a study guide? Huh. <laughs> You're already in the test, boy. I'm afraid it's too late. Simply put, he who has the most drive has the most strength. And he who has the most strength has the most power. Look at you. You can't even tell me what makes you happy. Whereas I gave a confident answer. Why do you suppose that you are so powerless? Or here I stand, invincible. He even took a lack of answer and used it against me. I tried to tell myself that it was the right decision. Are you saying that you won? I'm just reporting facts. But even if I'm weaker... I can still beat you. I already beat you. Nobody was supposed to know that you were responsible for the killings. The recent ones. Or the independent ones. 
Yoda stops in his tracks, his eyes glinting. Did he do the independent killings? I'm... I think he could just be, like, some psychopath, the... What, what did... The Committee of 300 picked up. <laughs> you know, the, the guys behind the scenes that haven't... We haven't really seen yet. I assume they won't even... Well, hardly even be mentioned until the second game. Well, not hardly mentioned, just hardly seen. Like, it, this game will end up like, We're bringing the fight to them! I mean, then it ends. Whatever the independent killings were, looks like he really was the person behind them. It's a breather that I desperately seize. I try to cover my fatigue by flinging a challenging look in his direction. Even busier than I thought. Okay, so it all was really him. Does it seem to be too hard? People don't tend to expect much of me. But you've even made friends in high places. Hmm? High places? This throws me for a loop. What does he mean by high places? Get that information from Natsuki. She lives in a shabby apartment in District 6. No, I can't be distracted. I have to keep the conversation flowing. Make him lose track of time. Just how many people have you killed? The Aztecs had this remarkable belief system. Would you like to hear it? I just asked a question. In order to appease the gods to- <laughs> I tricked him! <laughs> to keep the universe running smoothly, they were, uh, they were to offer constant human sacrifices. Priests would rip out the hearts of pris prisoners of war while they were yet to alive. If they slacked in performing this ritual, the kingdom as they knew it would fall to pieces. That's why you kill people? To keep us all running? What kind of reason is that? Oh, what? Do you think I'm the priest? His voice drops and takes out a hint of something unfamiliar. My spine tingles in apprehension. I'm not the priest, child. I'm the god. I receive bloody offerings. I do not give them. The city must earn my goodwill, lest I paint the streets red with my vengeance. The ones who scorn me will be obliterated by the very words of their own mouth. Oh, dear child, you know nothing of the beauty of pure unadulterated strength. I open my mouth, willing a snarky remark to come forth, but there's nothing. My hands are shaking, tightening against my thro throbbing stomach. What kind of madness has seized this guy? I straighten and open my mouth wider, hoping that something will come out. Anything. If I don't say anything, if I don't distract him, even if it means I have to listen to more of his this insanity, your antics amuse me, boy, but our intermission must come to an end. We must return to our little game. Too late. The opportunity's, opportunity's been lost, and now, now I'm rattled, and I can't recover. In terms of psychological damage, he's one-handedly. I don't think he could have happened any other way. Like a puppet master overseeing a play, he has total control over every scene. Well, boy, it's your turn. What's your move? I think... I think this time we stall. What? That's not what stalling means! Wait, what? It's a pity that life doesn't change, whether you can or can't do something. Why? Did that happen to you? Oh, are we having a little heart-to-heart? -heart? And something must have happened. Something that turned you pretty bitter. You'd love it if that were true, wouldn't you? Hurry up. Clock's ticking, boy. Save again. That's enough, boy. You've tried my patience for far too long. No, wait! No, no more waiting! His eyes flare with rage as he leans forward. Every muscle tighten from spine to neck. I instinctively shriek back, mind whirling. If this is the case. Can't let just let things continue on. Need to act now. I pull the pipe over my shoulder with great deliberation. This is going to work. As I'm preparing myself to strike the girl again. A moment passes. Then I fling the pipe around me, straight over the girl's head, and right towards Ryota. He's caught off guard and barely raises his pipe in time. The force of my... What is this awesome song? Crank that up! I turned it up a little. <laughs> he grunts with pain, but I feel no bones give way. Nothing that can give me an advantage. Gear strikes through me, but I refuse to freeze. I continue my assault, swinging my pipe with relentless desperation. High, low, middle, anything. But with the shock of the initial result, assault, assault worn off, Yoda's does an iron wall. He seems to know where my blows will strike before I swing them. Oh no, I have to hit him. I have to, or he'll take his revenge. I lunge forward, pulling all my strength in the next swing. Yoda doesn't sidestep. He doesn't duck. He only broadens his stance and holds his pipe on both ends, driving it upward to meet my blow. The impact shatters up, up my arms until his shoulders feel numb. My shoulders feel numb. I yell in pain, jumping the pipe on instinct. He immediately seizes that moment to bring his own pipe crashing down, right on my leg. Wah! Pain. Nothing but pain. Why is it? Why does this shoot in my mind, washing everything out? Rota's voice bleeds quietly through the agony, low and mocking. 
Now, child, that's not how you treat your elders. You really ought to have better manners. But suddenly, I catch a flare of orange from the corner of my eye, and Yoda hisses through his teeth. In the midst of the commotion, Yui is crept beneath the desk and sidled, sidled, sidled by pipe into her own grasp. Pipe that she just slammed into Yoda's knife arm. The knife tumbles out of Yoda's grasp and skitters across the floor as he stumbles to the ground from the impact. Yui doesn't let up. She swings the pipe again, straight into Yoda's neck. He emits a choked screech, but when he turns in her direction, his pipe swores, soars into an un with uncanny precision. Yui's eyes widen for a fraction of a second. He slams the metal directly against her for uh oh. So I I don't need to read this. We we know what's gonna happen. I'll just skip through it, so if you guys, you know, I'll glance through it. And... Should have hit his pipe arm, and he should have been... And he should have stabbed her. The hospitals can mend a stab wound. Crush skull. Instantaneous death. Can't leave me while I'm still talking. She's still in silence. Cold, don't leave me. I, I don't have anyone left. Yui. Bad end. Well, we we didn't go insane. Is this the final stall? I have no other option. I have to just follow along. My hands shake as I step closer, raising the pipe. If I can get, get away with hitting softer? No, it's a dumb idea. I know it's a dumb idea. Yoda would immediately know, and then... And he'd make me hit her again. Can't close my eyes. Might accidentally kill her if my aim is off. So I keep them wide open until the air pulls tears out of me. Out of them. And I swing the pipe. Wah! Her arms hangs limply over the edge of the chair, bent at an unusual angle that raises bile to my throat. How must she be feeling at this moment? How could she stand it? I mean, there's no rule saying you have to hit her hard. You should have, you know, you should have made that rule in the first place. Held captive for no reason, every nerves, nerve screaming fire at her, begging her conscious, consciousness to fade, but finding no relief. How could you live through that kind of miserable existence? Say, kid, you're not looking too hot. Want to call on a sick day? I doubt that's an option, I want to say. Something's unaffected and cynical. Something unaffected and cynical. Something that keeps me safe from the mess of the world. Instead, my mouth opens to pull up a topic to divert the conversation. You said you killed people for fun, essentially. Oh, does that bother you? I assume it would bother most people. But if I remember correctly, the Aztecs, well, they, cared others, they killed other strong warriors to transfer that strength to the sun. So, what made you turn on a bunch of helpless students? Even as I ask the question, the inner crevices in my mind whisper quietly. Is it worth it? Isn't this just prolonging an agonizing demise? But what other option is there? I believe in the Shigure who believes in us! Come to think of it, earlier you mentioned being an executioner. Ha, <laughs> good observation, kid. Let's just say that there's no coincidence that all the victims are connected to the Ikari Sun, hmm? How fun. You're about to join that number. That makes me falter. Of course. Vehiko isn't the killer, but has a connection to every single victim, and has to bear significance. How could I ever overlook that? Well, what do you ha even have against Vehiko? Is this trying to get his parents to do something? He's harmless, he's gentle, feels like a little kid in a broken world, something so stupidly innocent that it's refreshing. I have nothing against Yuhiko, you're asking the wrong question. He has nothing against Yuhiko, but he's killing people close to him? It's an incredibly drastic maneuver. Why would a serial killer suddenly focus his attention to someone like Yuhiko, because he's getting like paid to? No matter how hard, hard I think, think, the answer eludes me. Or not, not necessarily paid, just overlooked. Like, you know, the police won't mess with him as long as he kills the right people, you know? But I can't falter. I can't let him remember to continue the game. Think. Think. If I were Yota, if I were some psychotic man who loved to kill people, I want to like, extreme agony, then why would I do such a thing? What is Hiko that I'm not? What does Hiko have that I don't? Hiko is arrogant, a dreamer, easily excitable, oblivious. No, these are personality traits. Think deeper. Motive. The Akari son, Yota said before. The Akaris. If it doesn't have to do with his with past history, they don't really know each other th that well after all. After all, then is it because of money? Money. Connections. 
Yahiko is the son of two higher ups at Lemnus Gate. If Yoda doesn't have anything against Yahiko, then could he have something against his parents? If you were aiming for Yahiko's parents, it would seem a lot more effective to target the people around them. Still have that brand of yours, I see. Yes and no. Yes, since Yahiko is just an easy avenue to his parents. But targeting the people around the parents themselves? Instant suspicion! Not to mention artless and cliche. I thought you'd be smarter than that. A little thought bothers me. Why is he so open with this information? No, I don't have time to consider this. Right now, you just have to accept it. Think. War. I am Yota. Even now, I want to see blood. He hear screams. Tuh. Tuh. No, something is clashing. Students. Students aren't a challenge. They're too easy for me, the wretched pests. Their deaths are simple and insignificant. They'll be remembered for, what, a day? Two? Perhaps five years by their families. But eventually, they'll fade into inconsequential nothingness, because they're young and meaningless. Another tally in a long list of missing persons. Whereas, if I could get my hands on a politician, or a world leader, or even a company executive... Morning! Morning for weeks, months, years! Remember it's in history books! The man who killed the king, or the president, or the emperor, should make my mark on society forever. A beautiful thread filling up the space of my intricate tapestry. But instead, I decided to kill students, to capture insignificant little Yodans, just to put pressure on the Akari family. What a joke! What am I even doing this? Why am I even doing this? The Akari family is threatening me? No, certainly my judgment would be more swift. I'd care not about my own death as long as I could have them suffer first. Were they threatening me, I'd see them in their rooms the next night with a knife in my hand and a grin on my face. Capital punishment would be insignificant. I'd face the chopping block gladly in that case. Money? Perhaps someone is commissioning me with a monetary incentive? Tch. As if. I'm paid in blood. Currency is of little value to my psyche. 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 I don't know. If I really need a pocket, a pocket change, a few black market inquiries will do. Perhaps they need something many cannot buy. Something that only a certain commissioner has. And the only way to get it is to pressure the Akaris, even if it means killing rabbits. To do that, I... Started with someone only slightly related to Yuhiko, Midori Mayano. They are not even noticed. Yuhiko may mourn, to the compassionate imbecile, but to the Akaris, it's just an insignificant disappearance. Then Toma Hayashi, who inter interacted with their son at a greater level, and the or orientation group that Yehiko led. That may raise some eyebrows and call for suspicion, but nothing like the Akaris can prove. Next is Akane Tsukino, girlfriend of Shoji, who is close to Yehiko to the Happy Club. Shoji himself followed thereafter. A spiral of people, the Yehiko Ikari at its center. The poor soul will not understand what was going on, but sur surely his parents would. And in return, I would receive something of enormous value, something that money cannot buy. Even if it means that I must sacrifice a portion of my dignity. Heh. <laughs> Heh. Yama? You, Yoda, are on someone's payroll? You're a freelancer? With a client? You're no artist. You have no satisfaction. Oh, the mighty have fallen. What is a predator, feared by all, able to strike whenever and wherever he's so pleased? Now a mindless guillotine with no will of its own. How great is your greed that you would betray your love of art for this? Oh, but oh, you fool. You've conquered dogs in your heads. Silence. His voice teams of ice. It feels like psych writing in humiliation. It's just so thrilling. When they screamed, how easy it must have been to forget. Just as a man can distract himself with symphonies, so can he distract himself with agony. But when you returned, when he lay your head on your pillow, you must have realized the bitterness of your own insignificance. Rabbits, pawns, you are pest control. Do not test me, boy. But I'm, if I'm caught up in the euphoria, a welcome distraction from the never-ending cycle of pain and panic that plagued me before. Selling your soul for del a delusion, a pittance. You never wish to go back to happier times, times when you were a shadow with your name. The independent killings, nothing is more fearsome than the unknown. The people who knew about them, were they terrified? Did they huddle in their beds every night, unable to sleep, thinking they could be next? Did it stroke your ego, knowing that the one who held their fate in his hands was you? Or were those killings also at the discretion of your employer? Were there further connections that the police simply could not deduce? Was that also a primeval commission? Yoda grits his teeth and digs his fingers into the nearest desk, but he doesn't say a word. Then I'm right. I'm right. About everything. <laughs> Here you are, the fearsome Cerberus. Yet you're bound to a pathetic little leash. 
caught up in a corporate politics at that. Where there's where there's nothing but big wigs bickering like toddlers. What exactly do you need so badly? Can't imagine you'd be craving love or friendship. Give me a quick reminder. What else can money not buy? Respect? Naturally naturally good looks? Peace of mind? Or say an honest politician? Motives, Yoda. Motives are interesting things, aren't they? Everybody likes to think their motive is special and unique, but in the end, they're all the same. Money, love, power. Which of those apply to you? Or do you still think that you're all that special? That you're something more than an empty little puppet dancing from the strings of someone's fingers? <laughs> what a sick existence. What an agonizing, wonderfully meaningless existence. Oh. Yama, stop it! This is not winning. Yui's voice shocks me out of character, like a fish suddenly pulled out of water. I'm stalling, Yui! I stayed idly for a moment, my mind, blank, my mind blank. Not winning, of course. I wanted to win over Yoda. I wanted it so badly that that I even became Yoda. Let myself stay as him, even though I despise him more than I've ever despised anyone. But, but even that isn't winning. That's just losing. Because to become Yoda would just be to win the battle and lose the war. Morty inflicting energy, injury on innocent students with a metal pipe, just like Yoda would. I lost my mind. Cute display kid. Yo, cute. He's smiling assuredly. Almost recovered. His voice is calm, but I catch a notice tension that wasn't there before. I get the impression that I made a terrible mistake. And if I had proceeded, well, he would have snapped. What would happen if he snapped? Would, he all, would we all look like the, these two students bound to their chairs? Broken, helpless, pleading for death? I shouldn't have tried. But what else should I have done? Just gone along with the status quo? Would that have resulted in anything different? Know what's interesting? You're still missing something, aren't you? You think you've read the whole book. You think you know how it ends. You think you know the whole pattern. But even you're still blind. You see out of one eye, boy, but not the other. Missing part of the pattern? I, I don't understand. Think harder, boy. So, the sequence of deaths has to do with the Hiko. So what? So what? The broken gear in the back of my mind slowly begins to turn forward. Right, all the deaths revolve around Yuhiko, specifically over time. Those deaths have gotten closer and closer to their epicenter, almost like a whirlpool sucking in its surroundings. Closer to Yuhiko. Within the school, the closest people to Yuhiko, all, are me, Yuri, and Masato. The inseparable gang that hangs out together, day in, day out, flailing through life with a bunch of rambunctious high school shenanigans, of course. That was why he instantly picked up the phone. That was why he's been preparing for my call. That's why he kidnapped Yui, because we're already the next ones on his list. No. Huh? That was quick. Congratulations. To be honest, boy, the Kuryogane boy should be here too. But <laughs> guess what? He goes to bed too early. Hell like a light. Doesn't answer his phone. I haven't prepared my whole excuse and everything. I suddenly feel so very tired, weighed down. My intellect is fraying away. I can feel my sanity bleeding out of my body. Just let it end. It was all planned, from the very beginning. Can't keep holding out. Can't prolong this misery. Turn one up, Yota, and I only end up in a worse state than before. If that train continues, my eyes drift aimlessly to the ground. The pipe swaying limply between my fingers. Blood dripping quietly from the chairs. A small amount, a terrifyingly small amount, given how much damage we inflicted. How much internal bleeding must there be? How much pain? Now I know Yota's motive in history. So what? Stone an accomplice in manslaughter, bit by bit, wiping out the opportunities in this girl's life. The dream of playing on a sports team. The dreams of being a pianist. The dream of marrying a normal guy and having normal kids. I mean, she could still do that. Shameless- well, I mean, not if she's dead. But. Shamelessly and brutally striking these dreams from existence with no method of recovery. She's someone who has, actually has opportunities in life, but they're being taken away by someone else. Ah, the injustice of the world. You'd better be grateful I'm a patient man. A lesser being would have peeled your forearm in theirs for your insolence. Okay, hold on, guys. I want to do the Yota voice again, but I'm thirsty and I'm out of I'm out of drink. So, oh, give me like 20 seconds. Not even that. Not even that. You can count it. You can count it. Count, count, count. I'm here. Okay, we're good. There we go. 
mental image pulses in front of my eyelids and I stumble backwards. Naz nausea is surging to my throat. That's right. I'm just a kid trying to fight a seasoned serial killer. What was I thinking? I use my hands to push against the desk, shackling trying to prop myself on my feet. I only collapsed boundlessly. <laughs> Stop saying boundlessly. <laughs> Legs like gelatin. I can't continue this way. Not much longer. I see blood on the edge of the pipe in my hands. Blood that's not there. Blood that I know isn't there. But blood that still weeps down the metal and coats my hands. All is silent save for the strangled sobs of two injured children. Two dying siblings, side by side. Sorry. Sorry. I'm sorry. Well, guess it's my turn again. You know, I, I'm really giving you an advantage here by going first. Now you'll always be one hit ahead. Please, let's just stop. He ignores my faint whisper and steps forward, adjusting his grip on the pipe. The boy whimpers, incomprehensible words spilling out of his mouth. Sorry, kids, but the world doesn't listen to begging. Neither will I. He swings the pipe with a vindictive justice, perhaps a payback for my insolence. I flinch instinctively this time, barely missing the moment of impact. And then, a chair screeching against the ground, a piercing scream that rends the air, a light, sweet chuckle from a man who's lost his mind. As I force my eyes open, I catch an unfamiliar... Pugnant smell? Vomit, dripping from the boy boy's mouth, pulling over the sides of his chair to the floor below. My stomach turns over, my grip rattles against the pipe. Oh yes! This is life, children! The beauty of pain has no substitute! I step forward, forcing words out of my dry mouth. We, we need to stop. I, I can't handle this. Yoda swivels on me, the joy in his eyes immediately dissipating. We're just getting to the good part! You're saying we're gonna for you're going to forfeit? Quitters never prosper, boy. You wonder why we, we have never prospered. I drop to my knees, harder than I, than I intend. The shakiness of my limbs gives my legs a solid blow against the ground. This is no longer an act. Groveling and showing vulner vulnerability is not just another strategy anymore. I have no other way out, no other hope. Please, don't do this. I wonder if our when we first got the first time to stall, did we have to stall there? And why do the saves not have a picture attached to them? Like, there's clearly room to do that, like, you know. I've never brought that up so far, but that just seems kind of inconvenient. Do what? I can't find the words, so I only sweep my hand across the room. Oh, all of this? The whole ca captivity thing? The game? The fun? I manage to nod. Then, <laughs> will you lick my shoe? He stabs a foot in the puddle of the boy's vomit, shaking it teasingly at me. I don't make a move. I'm waiting. I open my mouth, fighting for words. Nothing comes. The vomit gleams in the sole of his shoe, mocking me. Yui makes an instinctive sound of distress, gripping your chair with widened hands. I stare at the shoe, willing myself to lean forward. I don't move. You see, boy, you're not ready to really beg. Why? Because you're still cling clinging to your pride, pathetic as it is. Some part of you believes that you will not have that you still have control over the situation. Some part of you believes that some miracle will bail I believe in Shigure will bail you out. If you're really ready ready to beg, if you really threw away your pride, you wouldn't be aiming for the limbs, no? When you hold that pipe, you'll be aiming right at the skull. That is the o your only hope right now. The only way hope of all of you. Death. But sadly for you, I don't like to rush my executions. Such a waste. I shake the chamber to my feet, weighing my arms on the table to pull myself up. Pride? Belief? Control over the situation? Do I really have any of those things? Maybe he's right. Maybe if I really was hopeless, I'd have already crushed two skulls and resigned myself to a long, excruciating death. But here I stand, with a pipe, ready to hit again. Why? So now that your little dramatic stint has ended, I believe it's time for your turn. He tilts his knife against the moonlight in Yuri's direction, sending a fresh reminder of the stakes. Stall as much as possible. So you don't like to rush? I know your little tricks, boy, and I'm not in the mood to entertain them. One more time? That's enough, boy. You've tried my patience for too long. No, wait. No more waiting. Let okay, we've already got this. So we can stall once. Is this the already start stalled once? No. Hit the girl. But aren't you stuck here forever? This fight, isn't it getting too tiring? Aren't you exhausted? We skipped the line there, actually. Grip the pipe, arm shaking as I raise it over my shoulder. There we go, okay. 
You're not strong enough to face this. I shook my head and squeezed my eyes shut, trying to knock the voices out of my head. We, we can't do this, Yama. This is wrong. We can't. I swing the pipe. Ah! No, no. Pipe drops out of my shaking fingers, leaning heavily against the nearest desk. My knee's too weak to support my weight. I can't. I can't do this. Oh, sure you can. You're doing great. Yoda lifts the pipe over the boy, whose face is coated in a mixture of sweat and tears, slicking his hair against his forehead. That the boy's eyes slide to mine, begging silently, hailing the day he was born. Yoda sends his icy smirk with a sheen of madness, reminding me of my earlier behavior. Payback, he seems to be saying. But I do nothing. Ah! The note is draw this time. You're off him on an overused throat that's been screaming far more than it should. Oh, that that's me! I'm in the game! <laughs> When it descends into silence, I can hear the breaths of the two students rattling in their lungs, shallow and ang anguished. Blood is starting to trickle from their mouths, slowly, down the corner of the jaw and dripping onto the pri their pristine uniforms. Death would be a far better option. How much time has passed? Feels like days, stretched out and pushed against each other. Practically, I know that it can't be more than a few hours. The sun hasn't even started rising yet. But holding out for this long only seems like delaying the inevitable. And in the meantime, harming innocents along the way. Why did it have to be you? Who? Be specific, boy. That I wanted. I wished it wasn't you. Shape up and tell me. Ambiguity helps no one. You shouldn't have been the killer, Yota. You're supposed to help me. You're supposed to get me through school, through drama, through life. Not this. Never this. I thought... I thought you were, were with us. Why? Do you feel betrayed? I thought, of all people, it wouldn't be you. Fortunately, that is a fallacy in your own thinking. But why? Why you? You know nothing, boy. Quit your dawdling. I think we can do one more. Tried my patience for too long. Okay, no. Can't do one more. One, two. Do we attack Yoda here? Have we reached that point? It kind of feels like Yama's reached that point. He's ready. Can't let things continue on. I need to act now. Okay, no. Nope. Hit the girl again. No, I, I want to go back, actually. Uh, how far back is this? We, we can do this one. Refuse. I... Accept. Okay. I think we need to try stalling the first time. Here, make a new save. Two students. And now, see if we can stall here. I'm still, you think it's a little, I don't know, dated? Just because something's old-fashioned doesn't mean it's bad. I don't see what you mean. Sure you do. Never been an avid fan of change, have you? So you're saying that I'm stuck in my ways? Well, I'll have a natural tempo. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, so we can stall here. It's certainly a positive outlook. Know what you're trying to do, kid. Cut it out and make your choice, now. I think that's it, but... Yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so basically, we need to stall until he says, I know where, you know, he mentions move. Well, you, you get what I mean, not necessarily move. Uh, I think that's the one. Yep, yeah. okay. Oh, did I say there? Yeah, I did. Okay. Hit the girl. And... That's the whole, you know, him realizing why he's targeting Yahiko. So you don't like to rush, I think? I think... It's... Can we do more? Yeah, no. Uh, 
Uh, quit your dawdling. Let's try it one more time. No? Yep. Okay. I think this is all new? Yep. Yeah. Okay, I raised the pipe, but my grip falters as my eyes turn to the girl. She no longer has hate in her gaze. She, she doesn't even have the slightest hint of anguish. Everything's just empty. I whisper it again, that trivial, trivial excuse that does nothing to help the situation. I'm sorry. This time, though, she responds, quietly, wibbling nothing but her mouth. I know. I swing the pipe. The blow rebounds against my arms as the bone of her leg fractures beneath the hard metal. The resulting scream is just another repeat, another skip on a broken record player. I falter backwards, the pipe rubbing my hands hard, raw. Reminds me that every bent limb, every cry of pain, is all my own doing. No one held my arm, no one swung the pipe. Every blow was my own choice. No one bears that blame, but me. And I don't know if I can continue to hold on. There's no sign of the sirens in the distance. No chance- oh, I mean, if they had their sirens on, I mean, that he would kinda know. No janitor making his rounds, not even the student in sight. There's four teenagers. Oh, do you think we had to attack him then? Maybe. And a serial killer with a knife. That, and one pipe, one solid pipe in my hands. I could say that I don't know what to do. I could say that I'm helpless. But it would be far more accurate to say that I know exactly what to do. I'm just too scared to do it. What, no begging this time? <laughs> I am almost disappointed. He strikes the boy again. A brutal blow that crushes his fingers. The boy wretches as he screams, choking on his own vomit. I'm getting a phone call from some number again. But it's a seven digit number. Is this like telemarketers? They called me like four times yesterday. Oh, what if my computer has a virus? And they're calling to tell me that. <laughs> the white crumpled cough that results is far more painful to hear than any scream. It's the sound of a human who's slowly dying. How do I call it? Oh, yeah, yeah, you can hit the top button on the iPhone and it declines the call. Stop it, please. Somehow. I step to the side of the girl, gripping the pipe so tightly that its rough patches begin to dig into my palms. I've gathered, I've gathered enough time. I've tried my best. The police aren't coming. A situation where there, there should have been a way out, any way out, there is none. The only relief I can bring is by murdering as many of these students as I can. Wait, 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 hold on! Will that happen in this case? Killing the girl? Turning me into a monster? I don't know. I just know that there are three innocent students here. If I don't do any something, we'll be stuck in this never-ending cycle of agony. And it would have been better if they just died earlier. It would have been better if I just killed them earlier. I don't want this. But is there any other choice? I just want everyone to be okay. Ultimate negotiator! I got an achievement. Kill the girl, attack Yoda. Is this a trick? Uh. No, Yoda's the one at fault. And he'll be the one to pay. I pull the pipe over my shoulder with great deliberate... Deliberation. Deliber deliberation. Yeah, I said that right. I said preparing myself to strike the girl again. A moment passes. Then I fling the pipe around me, straight over the girl's head and right towards Yoda. Wait, we've read. This is the bad end. Continuing my assault, swinging my pipe with the relentless de desperation. High, low, middle, anything. With the shock of the initial assault off, he is an iron wall. He seems to know where my blows will strike before I swing them. Do I have to hit him, or I, I have to, or he'll take his revenge? Lunge forward, pulling all my strength into the next swing. Yoda doesn't sidestep. He doesn't duck. He only broadens his stance and holds his pipe on both ends. The impact shatters up my arms until my shoulders stroll down. Can I skip this? No, okay, wait, good end! Good end approaching! He immediately ceases that moment to bring his own pipe crashing down. Right on my leg. Pain. Nothing but pain. Why does a sheet in my mind, watching everything out? Yoda's voice bleeds quietly through the agony, low and mocking. Now, child, that's not how you treat your elders. Don't you know the port that poor decisions come with consequences? He whips in Yoda's direction, pipe braced high in his hands, when... Suddenly, from outside the windows, light blasts into the classroom, followed by the shrill, shrill overtones of a megaphone. Jiro Yota, stand down! You're surrounded! Wait, she's done it! Release the students or we will shoot you. Am I hearing things? Have I gone insane? I mean, you could be in the classroom, you know, like... Is the pain of my leg clouding my mind? My eyes instinctively search out Yui's. Her expression is a mess. Horror mixed with sorrow mixed with relief. It's real then. Shigeru came. And even though she came... I glance at Yoda. He's frozen in shock. His hands automatically padding down his pockets, searching for his phone. The phone that I smashed to pieces with a metal pipe. 
It just solidifies my suspicions. He would have been notified if I hadn't managed to break that phone. But what can we do? I'm paralyzed, and Yui... Yoda's hovering right over above Yui, knife clutched tight in his hand. And suddenly, he's recovered from his momentary shock, his face collapsing back into a tight smile. Well, looks like the party's over! I sh draw a sh shuddering breath. Give it up, Yoda. You're surrounded. You're not getting out of this. How oh, I know that. Then put down your knife. Oh, kid! Can't you already tell? A feeling of dread instantly cre starts creeping in, like my bones are being frosted over. Tell what? I care nothing about punishment. I do not fear death. All that remains is the beauty of suffering. Yoda, this is not a warning we will- Can you just shoot him already? The fools! Surely they know better than to bluff with a staff member at this dang academy. Bluff? Simply put, if they wish to hit me, they must bow down the entire classroom. The windows are tinted for outsiders. They are blind as bats. No, how could that be true? I saw Yui. When I was outside the academy, I could see her through the window. And the police, they have to have infrared goggles, some kind of special vision that can help the maim. You... you must be lying. The Emperor in his new clothes! All the fools of the world believe they could, would, they could see what did not exist. Only one lonely soul, a mere child, showed them the true path. He releases another bout of unhinged laughter. I unconsciously drag myself backwards, ignoring the pounding ache in my leg. Is this just another step in his delusions? He seems to be spiraling to an even deeper and darker, darker hole. Come here, my lovelies. You're the last entertainment I'll reap from this world. He wants suffering. He wants me to suffer. The primary target of his choice is obvious. He turns to Yui, a flicker of madness in his eyes, as if the appearance of the police was the last switch to his, to his sanity. Yoda, we'll fire in five! Yoda pounces with uncanny agility over the desk, flinging his pipe in Yoda, Yui's direction as he drives his knife from his other hand. Yui throws herself to the side, but she crashes into another desk, sending wood splintering into her arms. One! Fire now! Now! You're the idol of gunfire, but the spray of bullets washes across the window, bedded with like knives in, in a wooden table. Spiderweb cracks, cracks cover the windows, but not one penetrates. Bulletproof. That's what Yoda meant. Bulletproof? Or is that not in the files? Someone tell me this wasn't in, in the files. Snipers! The perpetrator is moving too quickly. RPGs, now! Wait, R well, hold on. I don't model. There's a chance they'll kill the students. They're already dying. Fire this. No, Shigari, this is, uh. I have this under control? Yoda ignores the outside commotion and tackles Yui against the wall. You hear the dull thump of her head slamming into the plaster. Ah. And now to the squirming. Yoda's grip tightens on his knife. He raises his hand. In one fluid motion, without hesitation, pins one arm over her head. Then drives the knife forward, straight th towards her wrist, and. Wah! Yui! I throw myself forward, but my leg screams in protest. Helpless. Again. Oh yes, what a lovely color. He drags a finger across Yui's forearm, smearing blood against his palm. Looks at it with a look of utter bliss. My vision shuffles in front of my eyes as the ache in my leg spreads to my head. You, dear child, shall be the peace de resistance. With this heel grinding into another hand, he reaches into his pocket and pulls out something but experience like butterfly wings. A cold gray switchblade. No, no, Yoda, don't. He only smiles wider in surprise, leaning closer until the switch- Please? Can you do something? Your face, dear you, is so very lovely. Show service is an excellent face. No. No, oh, please. What? Bad eh? Kill the guy! But I falter. Standing stiffly, the pipe throws into my hands. Should I just hit her without the killing blow and let the game continue? I can't- wait, was that hit her? Kill her. That's kill her. Can't kill her just to take the easy way out, but I don't think I can keep sustaining my sanity. It'd be too- it'd be easy. Everything would be over. You don't need to bear this burden. This is what my mind is whispering to me, but I don't know whether to trust it or not. If I could see the ending, I would know. If we somehow end up getting out of this, then wouldn't she be glad to be alive, even with those injuries? Because at least she has a second chance at life? The pain, the suffering, it'll hurt and it'll scar. Maybe she could find a dream career, or marry a wonderful husband, or something that makes living worthwhile. But if we won't get out of this, the only thing that's in store for us is an agonizing death, against what you are fighting in fut futility, it never been better if I just kill her, killed her in the very first stroke. How could I make that judgment? How could I possibly predict that burden? Can I really choose to end someone's life with my own hands? I can't see the ending. I don't understand fate. Well, you see, you start with fate stay night. 
and then you read Fate Hollow Out at Araxia, and then you watch Fate Zero. Or you can do that before Fate Out Hollow Out Araxia, that's your decision. And then you can get into the spin-offs. Uh, the first spin-off, I, I'd say play Fate Extra, that, that's easy. And that uh, you could watch Apocrypha, it's not that good, but you can still... Then you could read Strange Fake, which is awesome. Apparently, I've only read the uh, like the prologue volume that came out for April Fools, but it, it, it that was pretty cool. And uh, then, then you're basically done. There's also Prisma Ilia, which you you can watch anytime after Stay Night. That's that's pretty good. The third season, especially. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I wish I could know the answer, but there's nothing for me. No one can see the future. If you dawdle any longer, kid, you will get the short end of the stick, or the pipe. However you prefer to say it. No more time. No more chances. I have held out as long as I could. I raised the pipe over my head, and we get directly in line with the girl's school. She smiles tremulously in understanding, closes her eyes. Acceptance. Perhaps even gratitude. Because somehow, we've landed in a situation where a quick death is merciful. What if what if I had been faster? What if I had been smarter? What if I had caught Yoda before today? None of this would have happened. Why did I sit Sit still in one place and allow this to happen. My arms shake as I will them to descend. I can't hesitate. I need to strike decisively. If I don't, the result will only be unconsciousness and a splitting headache. And no clean death. The girl doesn't deserve to wake up again in this nightmare. No one does. Hey, Shigara, can you please show up already? And with that, I guess it's time to become a murderer. I raise the pipe even higher, counting softly in my head. Three. I'm sorry I wasn't enough. Two. I'm sorry you had to face this. One. Then from outside the windows, light blasts into the classroom, followed by the shrill overtones of a megaphone. Jiro Yota, stand down! You're surrounded! Uh, can we skip this? Nope. Do you listen to the students or we will shoot you? Am I hearing things? Is my mind so desperate for a reprieve that it's throwing up whatever it can to stop my pipe? My eyes instinctively search for Yui's. Her expression is a mess. Horror mixed with a sorrow mixed with relief. It's real then. Shigeru came. No wait, it's not over. We're still in this room with Yota. Two students are still in a very dangerous position where they might lose their lives. I glance at Yota. He fr he's frozen in shock. He stands automatically panning down his pockets, searching for his phone. The phone that I smashed to pieces with his metal pipe. It just solidifies my suspicions. He would have been notified. Yeah, we read that. We have to run now. We'll catch us. He won't be able to stop himself from chasing us. I lock eyes with Yui, then jerk my head to the door. Thankfully, Yota is still transfixed on the scene outside, mouth agape in disbelief. Yui's Quietly slides from her desk and settles along the wall. Painful inch by painful inch, she's come, she comes closer. Hey! I immediately seize her hand and tear off! Running, what about the kids? What about those two guys? <laughs> Running as fast as we can on checky legs. We don't spare any words. We're in the shoot up the stairs, breaking under the rooftop. The smart thing for Yoda to do, to do would be staying right where he is, using the two remaining students as hostages to secure his escape. But he won't do that. He'll chase after us, furious. Pulling anything out of his way to reach us in time. So at this moment, the best thing we can do is run. The air is bitingly cold. If, couldn't you have gone, like, down stairs? I mean, that... <laughs> it blasts at her face as I lead Yui to the edge without a break in stride. See the line that goes through this row of pots? Jump over the edge there. What? what? Jump! To her credit, she does, leaping over the low, low railing of the rooftop and plummeting to the ground below. Except, it's not the ground, but the school pool. The pool over which Hiko Masato and I stood last year with umbrellas in hand, testing if we could somehow fly with them. I had hated Hiko for weeks after that moment, never thought I'd be grateful to have joined him. Yui lands safely with a splash and scrambles to the side as fast as she can. I force myself to wait for a few agonizing moments for her to swim out of the way, then vault over the edge and... Oh no you don't. An overpowering hand snatches my collar and yanks me back, crushing my windpipe against my jacket. I'm slammed against the ground of the rooftop, flat on my back. Yoda stands over me, knife loosely handled between his fingers, toying with the edge of my collar with the tip of his blade. His entire face is saturated in a terrifying mix of fury and ecstasy, something that sends chills down my spine. Cute boy, really bo cute, really boy, that was quite cute. He lifts up and presses me against the railing, setting the flat of his blade against my cheek. No, no, it can't end this way. What a good-hearted soul, ensuring the escape of Rui before you jumped. Someone like you, he's a reward. He abruptly turns the knife until the edge rests lightly on my cheekbone. I flinch instinctively, which only broadens his grin. If you want a bag, boy, now would be the time to do it. Like a rat sprinting through a maze, searching for its only chance of exiting, my mind races for a solution. Something. Anything. 
No, 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 nothing. Wait. Do you not wish to play a bigger role in society than an inconsequential pawn in this game of life? Or will you restrict yourself to the confines of your own abilities just because of her? My one last chance is this, being vaguely specific. I look your oldest square in the eye, only my voice to be steady with every last bit of my strength. She's disappointed in you, wasn't she? The result is immediate. Yoda's grin drops in the grip of his knife loosens, just slightly. His eyes turn completely blank, unseeing, and all for certain that in his mind he's recalling a dark moment, a terrifying memory, something locked away that he'd never let himself know, let alone a stranger. Remembering tears of regret, a whispered phrase, which then haunted nightmares every day since they were uttered. I don't allow myself to dwell on the thought. Before I get a grasp on what I'm doing, I'm already seizing the handle of Yoda's knife and turning the blade, shoving it with more force than I've ever, ever exerted in my life. Driving the tip right through his abdomen. His body jerks like a rag doll, but not a word passes his lips. The only sound I hear is the squelch of tissue and organs against metal. For a moment, there's silence, broken only by the distant flare of police sirens. His grip loosens and his weight falls on my shoulders, driving my arm painfully against the railings. A ragged whisper drifts to my ears. Such is our lot, Yami Ishimoto. We are a disappointment. Then, with sudden strength, he grips my shoulders and tumbles over the railing, pulling me with him. Wait, 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 wait! My stomach clutches at the terrified grasp of gravity as we plummet to the school pool below, falling from the school roof, seized by a serial killer. I mean, at a certain in height, falling on water is just like falling on cement. Do they? I, I don't know what height that is. This is what my existence has been. One struggle for, for life after another. A constant misstep. A wandering in the wrong direction. I mean, if you did it, it's probably fine. Now left with two innocent teenagers, broken and bleeding, their minds irreparable even if their bodies are not. A man, once intelligent, once admirable, now driven mad, a knife fixed in his stomach. A clean and polished school, ruined forever by a legacy of violence. And who knows how many lives shattered. The air tears at my face and clothes, screaming past my ears. Yoda's blood flies from his wound, coating the crown of my jacket. That's right, I stabbed someone. I crash into the pool with stinging force. Tendril, oh, you see, it's the classic water thing. Because, you know, you, Yama hates water. Well, does he hate water? Or just Does he just hate rivers or what? Tendrils of blood disperse under the chlor chlorinated water like spider silk. Yoda's iron grip on my shoulder loosens as the impact. Bubbles gurgle from his lips, brushing past my face as it pop to the surface. No longer holding the knife, but I still feel the form and weight of its, its handle between my fingers. This is what I've done. For a moment, I let myself drift in the freezing water. There's no point in swimming up to the surface, really. Wouldn't it be just easier to just drift away? Come back up to the world, and I'll face a long hospital trip, a court case. Catching up on essays about Second Wife's world, ci world civilization and worksheets on deriving trigonomic theorems. Take, you, take the exams, go to some university, university, major in something or another, get a white collar job, marry, have kids, die. All of this after trashing another human being's system to a pulp. Someone who might not recover physically, and will never recover emotionally. Is there even a point? Existent existential nihilism. The belief that there's no meaning, no value, nothing to life. I vaguely remember being terrified of the notion when I first heard about it in class. Most students just left it off. How stupid. How depressing. Life has no purpose? Whoever made that up has, no has issues. But it was too close to me. Living a life of homework, keeping my head down, going through each day, wondering where I was and what I was doing. Maybe I've just been trying too hard to find meaning where there is none. Maybe I've been desperately grasping for straws to find some kind of significance in an inconsequential existence. Can you just swim? <laughs> From a strictly technical, technical point of view, this is not the time to be thinking philosophical thoughts. Being at the bottom of a pool, just an arm switch away from a serial killer, probably with only 30 seconds left before I run out of breath and start drowning. Any sensible person would leave the soul crates session for another day and wait until, until all basic needs are met first. That's soul crates. Not Socrates. That's soul crates. Guess I'm not as sensible as I thought. Either that, or I can't bring myself to be. You can lead a student to air, but you can't make him breathe. That's how the saying should go. Maybe. I should just sleep. I suddenly feel so tired. Yui, can you hurry up? Are we doing a flashback? I think I've been here before. Should I? Should I do this? In, I, I think it'll be too long if I keep this in one episode. So I'll do the rest next time. When Yama stops being an idiot and swims. <laughs> I'll see you guys then. Bye.